Okay, I hear that we have Mr. Uh, Jayola now live from Ikoi in Lagos. Now, see if you can hear me. Now, take us through the theme. Why did you choose this theme for this year's uh, summit? Well, thank you very much. Uh, of course, the whole world has gone through a pandemic, and there's a need for people to work together. It's clear from the experience we've had since the beginning of the pandemic till now that it's not a job for one man. And so our belief is that as a nation, whether it be at the federal or the state level, whether it be public or private sector level and civil society, all of us need to come together and build a partnership. But a, not a partnership only for this problem, but a partnership that will take us beyond this problem so that we can become a more resilient nation that will be able to stand the test of time. So that's the reason behind the theme, building partnership for resilience. CEO, let's talk about resolutions. I've attended this conference too and beautiful, rich discussions with key players uh, all around the business environment, public-private partnership and all of that. How well has, would you say, government has been taking resolutions from this summit? This is the 26th. Well, I want to say that 100% uh, no. Have they worked on part of the summit? Yes. Have they worked at a time that we wanted them to work at it? No. Again, you find it's one thing to have resolution. It's one thing to plan to do something. You need to sequence it appropriately and have the financing alongside. And the fact that you don't have a continuity in government policy and in government actors have been one of the reasons why implementation has been very, very poor. And so implementation has not been up to it, but it's not that they, they ignore what we do totally. No, they're just poor. All right, indeed. That's why I was asking of the level of implementation. But let's move straight to COVID-19, which you touched on, on the economy. Now, what's your take with regards to response from all spheres of government, the fiscal side, the monetary side? What's your assessment as we move towards the summit? Well, even, even in countries that are more prepared than us, you will realize that responses have not been enough. Even in America, it has all the unlimited funding. They still use and cry about the need for sufficient support. So have the responses been adequate? No. Have they made effort? Yes. And that's why we need to realize that unless we really build and plan for things like this, when they do happen, all of us just keep scratching around about. So the monetary side is trying the best that they can. But again, recall that we had the initial problem was our, our oil prices went down. Even before the COVID itself, we were going to borrow money to balance our budget. And arising from COVID and implication on the oil market, the deficit just got wider. And we haven't been a nation that saved enough for the rainy day. So when you have not saved enough for the rainy day, and your revenue for the year is not enough to cover your, your expenditure for the year, you just manage what you have. So the response is not adequate enough, but again, it's not only government alone that needs to come to the party, every one of us, which is why any energy on our part, working with government, working with all the all the agencies of government, it's about how do we work hand in hand to ensure that this when this happens, we're more prepared. It's uh, we're in a world today where uh, 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 things of this nature is not gonna see. I mean, it's come to stay with us. But what is important is to prepare adequate for, for, for this when they have it in the future. No, but, no, no. The question. Yeah, and as a follow-up to the question on, on the summit, I, I'm thinking again, uh, because of the uh, NCDC guidelines and all of that, what kind of summit are we going to see uh, this year, CEO? So it's going, to, it's, no, it's going to be a blended summit. We're going to have a fiscal location. You know, we always do another annual location in Abuja where we have uh, about six or so seven to eight hundred, sometimes 800 people in. Of course, we know we cannot have that much people in-house this year. So we're going to have, you know, we will follow strictly the NCDC guideline to, to ensure that we have a right number of people within Transcorp Hilton that will come down physically. But there will be a station in Lagos and there will be people that will join us uh, digitally. So that's why there's two ways to participate in. You either make a fiscal appearance, which is very, very limited, or you join us online. And so our marketing strategy has been reach us online, 
and be part of it. And when people join us online, the beauty of it is that we can reach out to larger people. Some Nigerian in the diaspora will have the opportunity, and even those who are not Nigerians can join us. Again, we can reach out to all the states. So our plan is to reach out to all the states of the Federation and Abuja so that there will be sufficient participation. So it's, it's a blended program we are going to see this year. Indeed, and the cooperation even from the federal government and private sector and all of that has always been commendable. Are we expecting anything special or different this time around? See you. Well, in addition to meeting them at the federal, federal government level, since we're building a partnership for resilience, we're going to have a lot of the governors involved this time around. Mm. During mm. COVID, one thing was clear that even when we're looking at those that were infected, we're not looking at it in Nigeria. They broke it down specifically to states. And in some states, they will tell you where they are as per local government, which goes to reinforce the fact that resources and people live in states. And the more we get the states involved in decision making and in processes of and do public private partnership, the, the more. So you're going to see a lot of governors participating, participating in this system around. And of course, we'll have uh, our people in diaspora, our foreign partners and friends who are participants. And we have civil society. So it's really, I mean, just as we have said, building partnership for resilience, we're going to have people from all, all walks of life, those in academia, those in civil society, all of them are encouraged to participate in this one. All right, let's drop it up on this note now. What are your projections as we move on? Uh, the figures are not looking very good, even as we move to 2021. Some are saying the kind of recovery we'll have might be V-shape, might be a U-shape. We've heard lots from analysts, uh, particularly at this time where subsidies of petroleum products and there might also be a hike in the price of electricity tariff. Well, of course, we all knew at the beginning of the year that it was going to be a tough time, right? So... And you have many projections. Uh, we at NESG had set that we might end the year in about 4.2 negative. Uh, and, and IMF revised that to about 5%. Half a year we've done 